So we're, we're looking at part 31 of hydrotherapy theory and practice, and we'll be continuing on in our series. As you navigate any health challenge, it's always recommended you partner with a medical practitioner that shares your philosophy of care of the human body, in disease and in health. And the things that we talk about here are just extra tools in your toolbox for wellness and helping you to return to health if you're sick. Uh, <clears throat> any treatment or protocol that comes your direction that's recommended in any forum should be checked out thoroughly by yourself before uh, choosing to implement it. And uh, it's important that you do your own due diligence. Thomas Edison said back in 1903 that the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame and diet and the cause of prevention of disease. <clears throat> and that thought, while very forward thinking, was even predicated by some counsel in the Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, in 1885, which was <clears throat> eight years prior. There are many ways of healing, uh, practicing the healing art, but there's only one way that heaven approves. And those are God's remedial agencies of nature that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. So pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, and purity of life, as well as a firm trust in God. These are the remedies for the want of which thousands are dying. Yet these remedies are going out of date because their skillful use requires work that people do not appreciate. And just a side note, it's more than just work, it's, it's uh, time and patience for waiting for those powerful remedies to do their, their due work in due time. So the ones that they're talking about again are fresh air, exercise, pure water, and clean, uh, sweet premises. And that's within reach of all with little expense. <clears throat> Drugs are expensive. We've seen that here recently, both in the outlay of means, so financially, as well as the effect that's produced on the system. Third John 1 verse 2, back in scriptural times, was stated as, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. I want to make sure that our soul is in good health as well as our physical body. Romans 12, 1 and 2 is a reminder that uh, we should, uh, by the mercies of God, we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. <clears throat> and I think that has to do with some of the things that Psalm 91 starts out taking about, about dwelling in a secret place of the Most High. The knowledge that man is to be a temple for God, a habitation for the revealing of his glory, should be the highest incentive to the care and development of our physical powers. Fearfully and wonderfully has the creator wrought in the human frame, and he bids us make it our study, understand its needs, and act our part in preserving it from harm and defilement. <clears throat> so we're going to look at, kind of in, in review, a lot of the different things we've talked about, some, some conditions, as well as the hydrotherapy modalities that work well with those um, types of situations. So this is kind of a, a review over the different treatments. Some we have uh, maybe not mentioned, but most of them will be ones that we have talked about in the past. You can go back and review them previous episodes, uh, <clears throat> but we're going to be looking at, at some of the beneficial hydrotherapy approaches. So the first one we'll look at is alcoholism. Alcoholism and there are various states of alcoholism. Uh, there's a delirium, which uh, is helped with a neutral wet sheet pack. Uh, <clears throat> so neutral is going to be body temperature just or just below that. Uh, <clears throat> intoxication, so someone who has alcohol toxicity, uh, drunk essentially, an alternate compress can be helpful for that. Alcoholism, which is essentially the state of being an alcoholic. Uh, the sweating sheet, wet sheet pack, and what that can do is help to facilitate the removal of toxins. One of the things that happens with people who are in an alcoholic alcoholism state is fatty liver disease. And it's interesting that in they're seeing that in people who don't even actually consume alcohol, fatty liver disease and cirrhosis of the liver. And essentially they're, they're attempting to metabolize too much uh, high fructose. Uh, and that has a similar uh, metabolic pathway breakdown process and results in, in liver issues. 
associated with, with that high fructose powerful sweetener that is in many processed foods. So avoiding that uh, food additive is important. <clears throat> so the wet sheet pack, the sweating wet sheet pack helps uh, facilitate the cleansing of the body through, through sweating. A tooth abscess uh, or an alveolar abscess. So it's, it's referred to sometimes as alveolar abscess because you can see the, the jaw, the right uh, lower jaw there, the mandible. And the area where the, the red line is essentially is an alveoli or alveolar region that it's the pocket of the root. And you can see the, the kind of scalloped edges there where the tooth fits into the <clears throat> mandible. Uh, that is the alveolar margin. And it's the edge of, of that area. And that's just what it's referred to. Uh, so you can, if you have an abscess there, hot packs with ice bags. So, it, uh, so it's, it's alternating again, so hot and cold. Essentially pumping the blood back and forth <clears throat> through that area to help cleanse it, purify it, debride it, and heal it. A sprained ankle can be helpful with a contrast bath. That is hot and cold, hot and cold. Again, that's pumping, pumping the blood through the area. It's kind of like a, a, a specific heart you have your systemic heart, our heart that we we're born with, but then you can pull, draw blood in and push it away through vasoconstriction, vasodilation, and that can help reduce bruising as well. Appendicitis, a hot pack with ice bags. I think I related the story before about uh, a friend of mine, Andy Holland, who wrote a book called Switchbacks about his time in the North Cascade fire lookouts. And he ended up at the fire lookout one season and uh, the pack horse had already ventured away and headed down the mountain without any radio contact. And he ended up with uh, an acute pain in his right side. He was able to contact the, the ranger station down below by, by uh, telegraph and phone, phone line, but uh, he couldn't get down because there was no one to take him down. He was in such acute pain. They basically asked him if there was a snow field nearby. There still was to pack it with ice, he did. And that reduced inflammation significantly enough that allowed him to reduce the pain and survive and live through quite well, actually through the, through the entire summer or until he was resupplied. <clears throat> and he had his appendix out at the end of the summer. So that's quite an interesting story <clears throat> of the power of ice. But there's a picture here of the inflamed, the normal appendix. It basically is a, is a hideout in the body for good bacteria. And it can occasionally have bad bacteria get in there and uh, accelerate the growth and become inflamed uh, and doesn't have uh, maybe adequate uh, purging or removing circulation through it because it is kind of a blind pouch, uh, but uh, it does serve a purpose. It's not just a vestigial organ as some would claim. <clears throat> Some various forms of arthritis, so various joints. So here's a paraffin bath. Looks like someone's wearing a glove, but they've just dipped their hand into a, a bath of hot paraffin. I know my great, my grandmother had arthritis later in life, which uh, made it difficult for her to enjoy knitting and things like that with her hands. Uh, but she had, used to do a lot of knitting and uh, something like that could help soothe that pain. <clears throat> Acute arthritic infections. So that could be in a in a, a bursa or in a synovial joint. So ice cravat or, a, or an ice pack. Basically an ice cravat is like a, just a, a cold uh, wrapped bunch of ice that's put around the neck or around the area that is inflamed in, in cloth. And that's what it is, basically an old name for a tie essentially. Um, and then various other types of arthritis. Uh, Again, a contrast bath that can bring blood to and from, and that blood coming to and from can cleanse the, the area by removing the damaged tissue and taking away the bad. Rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid, rheuma, rheumatic, I mean, just kind of it changing, it has fluctuations as it becomes inflamed and then dies away uh, kind of over time. And ice cava, again, can be helpful in that a large fabric square that's soaked in ice water. Anxiety, we talked about how anxiety can be benefited by a neutral tub bath. So this is someone with, with uh, uh, some mental anxiety of various types. Uh, that neutral bath can be soothing in many respects. Asthma, <clears throat> you can use a, a heating chest pack for asthma. So this is a nice square here. The left view is the, the front chest portion. The back is showed here in the, in the right-hand picture. It's basically a long piece of cloth 
that is is wrapped around. It's been heated. It's uh, it's warm, warm and moist, and wrapped around that will um, allow the chest and lungs to be affected positively. <clears throat> Bruising and swelling, an ice pack again or a cravat. Bed sores, an alternate compress, so that's hot and cold, hot and cold. Again, that's pumping the blood to and from the area uh, to help cleanse the sore. <clears throat> bile pain, so the bile comes from the uh, through the bile duct from the gallbladder, and essentially it's cholesterol salts that are used to emulsify fat. And if someone's having pain from the gallbladder inflammation, uh, then uh, a hot trunk pack. So a hot trunk pack is not that different from the heating chest pack, except it's more around the midriff in the middle of the body. Uh, not the midriff, navel, above the navel, kind of chest level, because your liver is going to be kind of just right below your rib cage, as far as positioning goes. You can kind of see that in the in the picture of the diagram below. It can an ice bag can help slow bleeding. Uh, so there's different things to help slow bleeding. We can always do a direct pressure. We can do pressure points. Uh, you can do various uh, uh, clotting types of things. Uh, even spider webs can help create a, a net that would stop that. Uh, yarrow can help do that as well as cayenne, but even an ice bag through vasoconstriction, essentially that's the, the mechanism that helps to slow the bleeding. Blood poisoning of an extremity. So if you start seeing a, a red line creeping up uh, an extremity from a, a point of, of uh, injury, that's essentially infection, infection that's creeping up and a contrast bath uh, can help to uh, drive that back. Uh, <clears throat> boils, bringing them to a head, missing the G there. So bringing them to a head. So poultice applications of various types using water and charcoal, for example, or um, other types of uh, poultices like that. Bowel stimulation, someone who has constipation uh, can help have that relieved through a cold sits bath. Basically that helps to stimulate muscular action and help to move move the bowels more efficiently. Uh, Bright's disease. So Bright's disease is essentially inflammation of the glomerulus. The glomerulus is a portion of the kidney, one of the microscopic portions, of the filtration mechanism of the kidney, and it can be inflamed <clears throat> for a variety of different reasons. Uh, you have a normal kidney on the left of your picture and an inflamed uh, glomerulus illustrated on the right, and uh, it can take on different forms and, and reduces its ability to um, to filter appropriately. So a full hot blanket pack or a steam bath. So this is a very interesting cabinet bath. Uh, <clears throat> it's a modern cabinet bath. Essentially the towel draped over the top helps to prevent the steam from leaving the cabinet and just go in and sit in the chair, keep your head out. The person who's in there would want to have an attendant probably to be able to drink some water or have uh, a cool, cool cloth to the head as necessary. So hot steam bath can be helpful in reducing uh, kidney inflammation. Chest colds, a variety of different types of chest colds, uh, bronchial based. So the, the bronchial tubes are the branches, the primary branches from your, your trachea as it's going down into your lungs. The heating chest pack can be helpful there. Uh, bronchitis or capillary, capillary based bronchitis, a sweating wet sheet pack can be helpful with that. So that brings again, the, the sweat is removing toxins from the body. <clears throat> a congestive bronchitis, you use fomentations. So hot fomentations, a series of those, uh, not alternating <clears throat> necessarily with hot and cold, but just a repeated series of hot fomentations. And that helps to break up the phlegm, the mucus that is there entrapping the pathogens, the bacteria that are overgrowing in the, the lung tissue and just helps to break it up and be allowed to be brought out. Vapor inhalations of different types can also be helpful. Uh, so using the steam with eucalyptus, for example, or something like that uh, for inhalation benefits, oil of oregano. Uh, burns, an ice pack or a neutral hot tub. So depending on the, the scope of the, the burn area, so if it's just a, like on a hand or a, a local, localized spot, an ice pack could be helpful. Basically, you want to stop that tissue from, from cooking or burning. Um, it can even just be a quick, a quick burn, but running it under 
cold water or having an ice long enough to um, stop that uh, stop that burning of the tissue from happening, then that'll save you a lot of pain down the road. A neutral tub bath, if it's a larger scope, can be beneficial for birds. Bursitis, an ice pack. So bursa is being indicated here by the red arrows in the packs uh, of the, the bursa are basically fluid sil, uh, filled packs, uh, pads that basically cushion where tendons run over a bone and allow the tendons to, to move freely. The blue area right below the femur and the tibia, that's gonna be synovial fluid which is a, basically a chamber or a, a, um, a fluid filled sac around the joint. Uh, the yellow is, is a fat pad. And then you can see the tendon that goes through the patella there and there are bursas um, all around that. All the joints have bursa and bursitis is essentially just an inflammation of that region. So an ice pack can be helpful in reducing that, that inflammation. Catarrhal jaundice, um, an abdominal bandage. So around the midriff, uh, cellulitis, a, a swelling skin infection, a contrast bath, and a revulsive sitz bath can both be beneficial in cellulitis. Again, the contrast bath is, is helping to reduce the infection by bringing good blood in and having it, encouraging it to go away and then back and forth, bringing nutrients and taking away the damaged uh, portions and just increasing the circulation and increasing healing. The revulsive sitz bath is just another way of saying the hot and cold. Uh, it's just done for a, a shorter period of time. The contrast is going to be a little bit longer, um, longer duration of each uh, treatment temperature. Charcot's joint or ankle joint, uh, a contrast bath, uh, chemical toxins, charcoal poultice, inducing of sweating, um, a chest cold, some vapor inhalations again using eucalyptus, for example. Chest congestion, you can help that with just a simple hot foot bath on its own. That can really reduce the, the duration of a, of a cold and chest congestion symptoms. Uh, but doing that in addition to hot fomentations and a cold compress to the head, those working in conjunction uh, can be very powerful. So they can be lying down, the individual lie down and have their feet in a hot foot bath, do the hot fomentations. So the hot foot bath gives them an overall feeling of warmth. The hot fomentations will be directly applied to the lung area uh, and help to break up the phlegm and the cold compress to the head and even over the nasal areas will just bring uh, relief to that area too. It can even do it on the throat. <clears throat> And they're showing the, the fomentations uh, being applied to the back here as well. So this is a very comprehensive diagram. Chilblains. Chilblains is just an old term for itchy skin due to cold, a uh, cold challenge. So an alternate compress can be helpful in reducing that. Um, various types of circulation issues to improve circulation. Again, alternate uh, contrast to the spine, hot and cold to the spinal area in particular uh, for poor circulation, a contrast bath, hot and cold. So this would be more of a full body, like a shower or even a bath. Uh, <clears throat> a head cold, uh, vapor inhalations, but also you can do the hot foot bath. And that's also helpful for reducing the duration of, of cold symptoms by doing that hot foot bath. And colds can be benefited by the sweating wet sheet pack, which is what's being illustrated in this old picture here from a hydrotherapy manual. Uh, have them wrapped up like a burrito in a wool blanket with a wet sheet underneath that that they have been previously uh, wrapped in. And then another thing that one can do to aid uh, congestion, uh, in internal organ congestion is using an ice bag and also revulsive compress. So revulsive is gonna be alternate temperatures and then a fomentation is, is hot. So you're looking at, at three different approaches to affecting an internal organ. You're doing cold to reduce inflammation. Uh, the revulsive compress is gonna be hot and cold, hot and cold for short time durations. And that's gonna be acting as a pump, vasodilating, vasoconstricting, constricting, moving the blood in and out of the area that's below the surface. 
And then the fomentation is specifically referring to a hot fomentation. So that's gonna be vasodilating in particular. If there's any mucus there, it'll help to break that up and help it to move along. <clears throat> and then constipation, uh, one of the things that can help with that is an abdominal bandage. So you can do contrast heat uh, wrap or a poultice. Uh, you could use a poultice along with that. This is a uh, flaxseed meal on the, on the right, in the upper right diagram with charcoal and mixed together. The flax meal needs to be ground flax, uh, becomes kind of mucilaginous when water is added to it. And that helps to create a matrix with, with, which, within which the, the charcoal will stay. And then that a poultice can be applied with a heating abdominal wrap. That can aid constipation as well as a sitz bath. We talked about how that could also increase motility of the intestines, especially the large colon, and aid in uh, proper bowel movement as necessary. <clears throat> so those are a, a few of the various things you may encounter and just their direct hydrotherapy applications and treatments. Uh, we talked about them in detail. This is kind of in review, looking at uh, those if you want more detail on how to apply these various types of, of things, go back and review uh, the previous episodes for more detail on those. To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, homestead remedies, how to be self-sufficient when the grid goes down, wild edible and medicinal plants, hydrotherapy, and end time Bible prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.